Hello and welcome to another Excel Tips video. I am Sumit Bansal and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get an entire month's calendar with just one single formula. So this formula is going to give you the month name, the day's name and all the dates in that month. And this is made possible because of these new Excel functions such as let and lambda. So let me show you how it's done. So let me first show you the calendar function that I've already created. So give you a demo here and then I'm going to show you how to make it from scratch. So here I've already done a little bit of formatting, but the formula works even without the formatting. So the formula I have already created is called calendar. And this formula takes two arguments, the year value and the month value. So if I enter 2025 and one here, then it will give me the calendar for January 2025. And you can see I have entered the formula here. So it gives me the month name, which is here in the center cell. Then it gives me these day names and it gives me the calendar. And if I come here and I change this month to let's say February, then the calendar would update and it would give me the updated calendar for February. So now let me show you how to make this from scratch. So now I'm going to create this formula from scratch and I already have these two values, the year value and the month value in these cells, uh, but we are just going to use it while we are creating the formula. Eventually when we create the formula, then we don't need these. We would be using them as input that the user can give to the formula. So let's create the formula. The first thing I need is the month name and I can do that by using a choose function. Now, the reason I'm using the choose function is because I want the value, the value of the month and year here in the middle. So I want this in the fourth cell because total I have this grid of seven uh, columns and I want the month name to appear in the fourth cell. So I'm going to use this choose function where I'm going to create a sequence of uh, these numbers and the sequence is going to be in the row. So I have sequence comma seven because if I just use seven, then it is going to give me the values in columns. But if I use comma seven, then it is going to give me the values in a row. And now here I can specify for each value. What is the for each value of the sequence? What is the value of choose that I want to put in the cell? So for first three values, I just want blank. And the, for the last three values, I want blank. And for the fourth one, I want the name of the year and month. So here I'm going to have blank then blank, then blank. And then I'm going to use a text function where I'm going to first create the date. So let's say the date here is this year, this month, and the day would be one. So this is the date. And I want to show this date in a specific format, which is the month followed by the year. So when I have MMM, it is going to show me a three alphabet month name. And then with a dash, it is going to give me the year value. So this is what I'm going to get in the fourth cell. And then for the fifth cell, I want a blank, then blank, then blank. And now when I hit enter, it gives me this value here. So it gives me January 2025 in the fourth cell. If I come here and I change this to two, it gives me February, February 2025. So this is easy and this is sorted. Now, the next thing I want here are the names of the days. So I can quickly get this again by using a simple sequence function. So here again, I would have comma seven. And now when I hit enter, it gives me these numbers one to seven, but I don't want the numbers. I want the day name so I can use the text function here. And here I would give it a formatting. So the first argument is going to be the number. And the second argument is going to be the format in which I want that number. And here I would just say D D D. And when I do that, it is going to give me the day name. But the problem here is it starts from Sunday because by default, Excel's calendar kind of uh, these functions, they start from Sunday. So if I want Monday to be the first one, what I need to do is I would come here and I would just add plus to this sequence function. So now when I do that, it gives me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. So this is again sorted. Now, the last thing I want here, the third formula, which is also the last formula here, is to fill this grid based on the selection of the year and month. So again, let's start with the sequence function. Let me expand this formula bar. So we would start with sequence. And here I want a grid of six rows and seven columns. So now when I hit enter, it gives me this grid. But this is not what I want because there are two things I want to sort in this one. The first one is it always starts from Monday, where Monday is the first day, which is not the case. For example, January 2025, it starts on a Wednesday. So I want these two cells to be blank and then the numbering should start from here, one, two, three and so on. And finally, it shouldn't give me numbers that are more than the number of days in the month. For example, here in January 2025, there are 31 days. So I don't want these additional numbers. Similarly, if I make this February, then I don't want numbers beyond 28. So I need to sort these two things out. Now for this, I need 
two formulas. The first one is the formula that will tell me what is the day on which the first day of the month start. And that can be done using the weekday function where it needs a serial number. So I can create the serial number by using the date. This is my year value. This is the month value and the day is going to be one. And I also want the weekday to start from a Monday. So I would select this option here. If I don't do that, then it is going to mess up my, my calculation. So I would choose two here because then the weekday would consider that Monday is going to be one and Tuesday is going to be two and so on. So now when I hit enter, it gives me three, which means that the third day is the first day of this month, which means that Wednesday is the first day of this month. See if I change this to two, it gives me six, which means that Saturday is the first day of this chosen month. So let me make this January. Now this is three. So I need to somehow change this in such a way that this becomes blank, this becomes blank and this becomes one. So to do that, let me copy this formula. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the sequence function. And here I would say, comma, minus this value. So minus three, which means that starts from minus three. See what happens when I hit enter, it now gives me minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. But again, this is not what I want. I want the numbering to start from here. So I'll just come here to the sequence function and add two to this. And this sorts my problem because now Wednesday starts from one and the numbering is correct. If I make this two here, then the numbering starts from one, which is correct. Now, I also do not want these negative numbers, but we will sort this later in the formula. The next thing I want is somehow to figure out how many total number of days are there in this month. And that can be sorted by using the EO month formula, where again, I would have the start date. So let construct the date. So this is year value. This is month value. Then the day is one. And I want the last day of the same month. So I would put zero as the second argument. And now when I hit enter, it gives me this value. And if I convert this into a date, you will notice that this gives me 31st January 2025, which means that this is the last day in this month. But if I convert this into a value, it's something like this. And I do not want this number. I actually want actual number, which is 31. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, subtract the starting date of this month from this. So if I would come, I would come here and I would say date, this is my year, this is my month, and this is my day value. Now when I hit, so now it gives me 30 and I can just come and add one to it. So now this is going to give me the right result. So if I convert this to general, you can see it gives me 31. And if I come here and I make this two, it gives me 28. So this means that the month starts from Saturday, which is the sixth day, and there are 28 number of days. So I'm going to now use these two values to make my grid right. So in this case, what I'm going to do is let me change this to one. Now I'm going to come back to this formula and let's copy this. Now what I'm going to use is a very simple if function where I would say if this value is less than one, then give me a blank. Then I'm going to use an if function again and I would say if this value is greater than this value here, then give me a blank, else give me the value. And now when I hit enter, you can see I have the right grid. If I come here, if I change this to February, my calendar is actually working. So this is a proper functioning calendar as of now, although it's using multiple formulas and I'll show you how to combine them and make them into one single formula. But as of now, my calendar is working fine. But I do not want these cells here. So I'm going to change my formula and make sure that I do not have these dependencies on these cells. So I would just copy this part and let me just replace it in the sequence function. Now this is going to look a little complicated, but the logic going behind it is very, very simple. So I have I8 here, I would replace this, hit enter. So I don't need these two cells, I can remove them and my calendar should still work fine. So this is all good. Now, uh, what I need to do is somehow combine all these three functions into one single, all these three formulas into one single formula. So I can do that by using a function called vStack and vStack would take arrays and then stack them vertically. And this is exactly what I want. I want the array here, here and here to be stacked vertically. So what I'm going to do is use this A1 and I would put hash, which means that I want the entire result of the formula, dynamic array formula in cell A1. So I'm going to stack this here. Let's go to the formula bar, then stack this so A2 hash and then stack this. So A3 hash. And now when I hit enter, it now gives me one single formula 
that gives me this entire result. Now again, this is not what I want. I still need to do a little bit more work, but what it's doing is it's taking the, the input from these two cells. So if I change this, you can see the, the calendar works fine. It's taking the input from these two cells and then it is using these three different formulas and then it has combined all these three formulas using a vstack function. Now what I'm going to do here in this case is I'm going to construct a let function so the let function is going to do two things. First of all, it is going to simplify the formula. So it will, it is going to be one simple formula, one single formula, and it is going to simplify it in such a way that it will become more readable. But at the same time, the let function will also allow me to create a lambda function. And then after I've created a lambda function, you can just create a function called calendar or anything you want, and then use that instead of uh, using these big formulas. So let's do that. I'm going to create a that function, the let function. So let me delete this part from here and let's create the let function here. So in the let function, there are going to be uh, a couple of variables that I'm going to use. And I have created a proper complete video on how to use the let function and how to simplify your formulas. So you can watch that video and I would put the link in the description below. So now in the let function, I'm going to take these three formulas and I'm going to give them uh, a random variable name, assign a name. So let's call them A, then I'm going to go to the next cell, B, and you don't have to go to the next cell, I'm just doing it because the formula becomes readable, and C, and then let's just use the vstack function and combine A, comma B, comma C. Now, if you're wondering what are these A, comma B, comma C, uh, A is going to be assigned to the formula in this cell, B is going to be assigned to the formula in this cell, and C is going to be assigned to the formula in this cell. How? I'll just copy paste it. So let's hit enter. Obviously, it's going to give me a value error. So copy the formula in this cell, I'll come back to the let function and I put this here. So what is happening is the result of this formula here is going to be stored in the variable called A. And then the result of this formula here, so let's copy this, is going to be stored in the variable. Okay, it didn't save my earlier formula. So let's copy this. Come here, put here, enter. Then I would copy this formula here go back to let function, paste this here, enter, and then I would copy this huge large formula and go to the let function for C variable, enter and hit enter here. And you can see the let function is working. So even if I now don't have these formulas here, my function is still working. So let's do one thing. Let's copy this entire let formula and put it here in the nicely formatted grid and delete this. So now my let function is working. Uh, we're very close to now creating our own lambda. Now what we are going to do is create a lambda, but when we are creating a lambda, we need to specify what are the inputs that the lambda function is going to take. And again, I have created a detailed video on how to use the lambda function. So I would have a link in the description so you can watch that video. Now what the lambda function does is let me quickly construct a lambda function here for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a lambda function where it would take the year value, it would take the month value, and then it, there is going to be a function which is going to be the let function that we have created here. And we are going to put this let function within the lambda. And now when I hit enter, this is going to become my lambda function that will just work just like so I can name this lambda as calendar or whatever you want. So let's do that. Let's copy this big let function. In fact, actually, let me just come here and put the lambda here itself. And now hit enter. And within the lambda, as I told you, I'm going to have two variables. So that would be year value and month value. And then I have this function. Now, the problem with this is this is all fine. But the problem is when the user gives me the year value or the month value, it needs to be used somewhere in the let function. Right now it is not being used. And the reason for this is because I am right now taking the input from these two cells 2025 and one, but I need to take the input from here, which is year and month value that the user is going to give me once the lambda is created. So what I'm going to do is let's simplify this formula again. I'm going to create another variable called x and I'm going to create the date here. And the date is going to take the year value from the lambda input, month value from the lambda input, and the day is going to be one. And now that I have created this variable x, I can replace the date part everywhere in this let function with x. So I would come here and I would replace this date with x. Then let's do it wherever I can find it. So here, then I think it's here. Here, it's here, and it's here. Yeah, 
So I think now we are very, very close. Uh, our Lambda function is done. Now when I hit enter, it tells me something is wrong. Yeah, because there needs to be a comma, not a full stop. So now when I hit enter, it gives me a calculation error, but that is expected. That is expected because uh, I have not given any value to my Lambda function. So here, if I come and I give an input to my Lambda, which is let's say 2025 and the month is January and hit enter, it gives me the calendar, which also means that my Lambda function is working. So I don't need any of this. I can just remove this. Now my calendar function is working and you can come here, you can change this. If you make this two, then it becomes February 2025. So this is working but I still need to convert this Lambda into a proper function. And that is actually very easy. Just remove this part, only copy the Lambda function part here, go to the formulas tab and here go to name manager. And when you click on it, it opens this name manager. Now I have already created the calendar function. This is how I, I showed you the demo, but let's create another function. So let's call it cal2. And again, you can call it anything you want. And here you just paste the Lambda function you copied, click OK and it says something is wrong. So let's go to the beginning. Sometimes it just doesn't copy the equal to sign. Oh, the syntax in this name is not correct. So let's call it calendar n. And now when I click OK, yeah, it has created the name and let's see if that is working. So here, instead of using this big large formula, I can let me remove this formula from here. And now we are going to use calendar n is the formula that I've created. The year value is 2025, the month value is one, and boom, we have the calendar and it's working fine. So as you can see, the logic that has gone behind this formula is not very difficult. We created three separate formulas, then we combined them using vstack, and then we used a let function to simplify everything, put everything together, and then we wrapped that let function within a lambda so that we can use something like a calendar, simple calendar function within your worksheet. So I hope you've picked up a couple of nice tricks in this video while creating this calendar. Even if you do not need this function, you can use the same logic and then create your own functions. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.